Welcome back to another video guys. Today's video is going to be on practice set 2. Uh, first thing I want to apologize on practice set 2 on the top it says practice set 3. <clears throat> That's incorrect. This is practice set 2. I have to make that change. I, this, I have to make this change in PDF and reload it. But it is practice set 2. If it's labeled practice set 2 on your blackboard it is indeed practice set 2. And you can see that the question right here on the screen is similar to mine. It's basically start off with series questions and we go from there. All right, so I have my Excel sheet open here. I'll save this file and I'll post it up after we're done. Let's just jump into it. Number one. Number one, we have a series here, right? Remember, what is the difference between a series and array, guys? A series is basically an array with an index as well. It's basically an object that has an array in there. And that's, what the, what's, that's where the values are stored. And but the values are also associated with the index. In this case, this is just going to have a single index, uh, but there are situations where you can have multi-indexes, right? But always with the series, only one pair of values. You can have as many indexes as you want for one value, as many multiple indexes, indexes as you want for one particular value, but always one value. So here in this case, this series, S of 1, this operates the same way as a list or an array would. It's basically going to be the second value. So your answer is 0.5. Okay, it gives you the second value. Number two. What is mapping B? Excellent. Here again, now notice in number two, I created an S2 array, but this time I, I actually explicitly state the index in there. And then I convert it into a dictionary. It's kind of overkill, right? That's what this dot to underscore dict function. I didn't show you guys this, but this dot underscore to dict function, that's basically what it does. It converts a series into a dictionary. Very easy to use. So either way, mapping quote unquote B in there, right? When you convert a NumPy uh, a panda series into a dictionary, what happens is the indexes become the keys, the values remain values. So in this case, the indexes become the keys. So if I put B in there, B corresponds to the value 0.5. So the answer is 0.5. Number three. All right, number three, what is, uh, okay, now we're going to look slightly fancy. You have the series again that's going to have the values one, two, three, four, and you have indexes A, B, C, D. Now, we are doing slicing. I am saying, what is the sum of S2, uh, what, what is the sum of S2, subset of S2, sliced by B colon C? Now, because one, it's alphanumerics, the indexes are alphanumerics, two, they're in alphabetical order, they're in some sort of order, this will work. But the trick here is this, when you're in a series, when your indexes are alphanumerics, that second value C is now inclusive, not exclusive. So here is one of the exceptions. When you're slicing in a series with alphanumeric, your uh, colon slicing, your, your second value, in this case C, will be inclusive. So this is going to be basically 2 and C to give you the answer 5. So for number 3, your answer will be 5. Number 4, what is sum 2, 0, colon 2? And again, we're slicing. Now, okay, now check what's going on here. Here now, you're doing number slicing, right? But the indexes are alphanumeric. How do you deal with this situation? So if your indexes are alphanumeric, what ends up happening, and then you start doing number slicing as opposed to the question above, which was number three, right? Again, they're the same, they're, they're the same series in four and three. But number four, we're now doing number slicing. So what happens now? What happens now is because of the fact that the indexes are alphanumeric, if you do number slicing with the colon, it's now going to revert to positions. So what ends up happening is it's saying, okay, cool. You want the first value. You want the second value because it's going to be 0, 1, 2. But the 2 will now be exclusive. The 2 will be exclusive. Why? Because we're doing number slicing. And this number slicing, the way it works is going to be, it's going to go to the positions. So it's going to be, and logically it has to go to positions, guys. The indexes are alphanumeric. So logically it has to go to positions. So it's going to be 0, 1, 
but not up to, but not including three. So the answer is going to be three. For number four, the answer is three. Number five. All right, number five, we're using the same series as in three and four, but now look what I'm doing. Now, I'm saying I'm using the double bracket comma slicing methodology, the double bracket comma me uh, method sli slicing methodology. And now I'm saying give me the first value, zero pertains to this first value, and give me the third value, and two pertains to the third value. And if you remember, again, it goes back to positions. If you remember, right, in the bracket comma system, those numbers are always inclusive as opposed to the colon situation, right? Those numbers in the bracket comma, everything's always inclusive. So this literally would be this value and this value. And if we add them up, you're going to get the answer 4. So the answer for number 5 is 4. Number 6, guys. Ah, okay, excellent. Again, same series as 3, 4, and 5. But now I'm using the comma, bracket comma uh, slicing again. But now I'm using the index. No problem. Same concept. So now I'm choosing the values by the index. Same concept here. I'm choosing the B value, whatever is associated with the B index. In this case, that'll be 2. And I'm choosing also what is associated with the D, and that will be 4. So I will come up with a subset of the numbers 2 and 4. I'm taking the summation of them, and the answer is going to be 6. Number seven, what is sum of S3, B colon C now? All right, so here now I slightly change the series because now I change the index so that it's now A, B, B, D. Now firstly, notice there's two uh, Bs in there. This is okay, this is not an error. Indexes, indexes do not have to be unique like they do in SQL, in databases, in Pandas. This is why Pandas allows this whole multi-index concept, right? And I worked with projects and databases where we would have indexes that were not unique. Again, if I go back to financial, any kind of financial security, we would have create indexes for different financial securities based on their um, some level of asset class. For, for example, interest rate options. Interest, interest options would basically be labeled. All the interest options would be labeled as interest options. All the, um, let's see, uh, different FX options, right? You have different FX options. They would be rated with different, uh, they would have the label FX options, even though they're on different currencies with different maturities, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do this. That's not a problem. All right, now here, A is associated with 1, 2 is associated with B, 3 is also associated with the second B, and 4 is D, okay? No problem. Come back here again, S3, 0, colon 2. What happens? Again, it doesn't matter about the indexes. When you do the colon, it's going to fall back into the positions. And when it's doing the positions using the colon, it's going to second val that two is going to be exclusive. So this is going to be one plus two and not the three. So eight again. Oh no, we're on seven. Oh, sorry, I apologize. We're on number seven. So go back here to number seven. So here we're doing B colon C, guys. B colon C. Ah, uh, okay, cool. I'm selecting B, but which B do I select? You select them both. Because of the fact that series won't be able to tell the difference, you select them both. So what ends up happening is when you select B colon C, you're grabbing 2 and 3. And again, because you're using the alphanumeric indexes, you're grabbing that C also. Oh, there is no C. There's no C. Is this going to be an error though? Because notice it's B, B, D. There's A, B, B, and then D. There's no C this will not be an error. Remember, the colon is forgiving. The colon is forgiving. So because of this, right, it's saying B colon C, series will be like, I see no C. I do see some Bs. I'll grab the Bs. So your answer for number seven is going to be five. And again, this won't be an error. And again, this is shocking because uh, Pandas and NumPy is very, very precise, right? But again, but nevertheless, the colon again, it's very forgiving when you're doing the slicing. So it won't give you an error. It'll simply grab whatever is within the slicing. Uh, the slicing. If there is no C, we never took it. If there was a C, we would have grabbed it. 
So in this case, we only grab the Bs, and the answer will be 5. Now we're on number 8. Okay, now we're finally on number 8. And on number 8, guys, I have the question. Um, again, we're doing 0, colon, 2. No problem. This should be straightforward. Again, if it's 0, colon, 2, you're grabbing first value, the second value, but again, the, that 2 will be exclusive, not, the, not, the three, not that 3 value. So again, your answer will be for number 8, 3. Nothing changes there. Nothing changes there. Number nine, what is the sum of bracket, bracket, zero, colon, two, bracket, bracket, right? So again, we're doing the bracket, comma, using numbers. And again, this will be straightforward again. I'm going to go grab the first value here, and I will grab the third value for an answer of four, ladies and gentlemen. The answer will be four. Number 10. What is sum S3, B, comma, D? What is S3, comma, D, guys? Boom, again, I'm selecting the B, the B, and here I have a D, I have to select the D. Now, again, we're grabbing the D is obvious, the D is obvious, but again, the B is because series can't discern which B you want, it's going to grab them all of them, right? So you're grabbing the B, the B, and the D. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we, uh, for those financial tables, we would, like all my interest rate options, I would, I would label as interest options because if I'm doing some sort of math, high-level math or summary on all the interest options, this concept of if you're selecting just one type of you know, index and you can do any kind of math on it right, automatically, it just really, really is very convenient when you're dealing with large, large, diverse type of table of information. So in this case, again, we're grabbing the B comma D. So I'm grabbing literally the 2 plus the 3 plus the 4 for an answer of 9. All right, to number 11. S4, all right, now I change things up a little, guys. I change things up again, and now we go back into, we go back into, um, for number 11, we go back into a series with that numbers as values and also numbers as indexes. But here I explicitly choose the index. Check out the indexes, right? They're numbers, but they're numbers out of order. You got a 2 here, a 5 here, a 3 here, and a 7 there. Again, it's all good. You're allowed to do that. It is all good. You're allowed to do that. Now, in this situation, when I do 0, colon 2, what happens? Again, it does not matter if it's going to be an index of numbers or an index of alphanumerics. Doesn't matter. Once you do number once you have once you do number slicing with the colon, you are automatically selecting the values by the positions. Index be damned. Okay? Index be damned. Okay? Because of this, right? Again, this is consistent with the other problems. I'm grabbing the first value, the second value, but not the third value for a total answer of three again. It does not matter what the index is. Alphanumeric number does not matter. Colon slicing with numbers is going to be by position. The first value, the second value, not including the third value for an answer of three. This will give me an answer of three again. All right. Now here is where there's the difference. When you're doing bracket comma, all right, guys, when you're doing bracket comma, now what happens is you have to look at the index. Now you have to look at the index. Whereas before, the, if we had the if we had a index of alphanumerics and I did a, a bracket comma with numbers, I would go back here to the position. I would go back here to the position of the values, right? Not so when you have an index of numerics. When you have an index of numerics and you do a bracket comma of numbers. That is now not looking at the positions here. No, that is actually looking at the explicit index values here. So in this case, this 2 right here is grabbing, is basically saying, hey, what's the value of this 2? Which will be 1. This 5 right here, what's it doing? It's looking at this 5 and it's saying it's grabbing the value of this, which is 2, for an answer of 3 as well. Right, so look, it is 3. 
But look how we got it. We got it using the indexes here. Whatever the value is for this index, what is ever, whatever the value is for this index. Okay, 1 plus 2 being 3. <laughs> number 13. Uh, again, same concept. Look, you have an index of numbers. You're doing bracket, comma, bracket. I'm going to be looking at the index. I'm going to be looking at the indexes. Zero is there is no zero. What happens? The bracket, comma, unlike the colon, is not forgiving. I'll say this again. The bracket, comma, slicing unlike the colon, is not forgiving. There is no zero index. Therefore, you're going to get an error. 13 straight up will be an error. 13 straight up will be an error. All right. Number 14. Now here, I'm asking, what is the sum of fruit df one coin three bracket bracket price? All right, cool. How do I solve this? I gotta create this. Apparently, I'm cre I'm creating a series here. I'm creating a series here, and now using the I'm using those two series to create this table fruit df right here. So let me create the table, and then we'll solve the problem. All right, let me create. Let me go ahead and create the table for number fourteen, and then we'll solve the problem. So let me scoot over like here, so we have the whole values. All right. So notice the syntax I'm using. I'm using to create the series now. I'm not using the syntax from above. I'm using the parentheses braces syntax, which basically means I'm going to call I'm I'm calling the index first, then the value, the index first, then the value, the index first, then the value, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, uh, so let's go ahead and construct this table. Now, notice price is going to have cherry, berry, orange, apple, and plum. And then notice also, but the quantity will be cherry, berry, orange, apple. Okay. Now, I will have four, I will have five, a five value series in price, and I will have a four value, uh, four value series in quantity. <clears throat> and I have to combine them with the table. But now I ask you, listener, what is the order that this should be? Are you going to simply say, oh, that's fine. It'll be cherry, berry, orange, apple, and then you add plum at the end? Some of you guys will do this. I never explicitly talked about this, right? But I will talk about it now. I didn't ever explicitly talk about this, but I will talk about it now. You see, when you're, when you're creating a data frame yourself and you're using series to do it, the ordering will be in whatever ordering you initially made it, except for the situation where the indexes are not precisely exact, okay, where the indexes are not precisely exact. If you have a situation, so if your indexes are precisely exact for whatever series you're combining into a table, whatever order you have those indexes as, that is going to be the order of the table. But if my indexes for the, whatever series I'm using to combine the table are not 100% exact, then that pandas table is going to be in either numerical or alphabetical order, depending on what the indexes are, be they numbers or, or uh, alphanumerics. Okay, so let's look at this situation. Is these indexes 100% exact? Cherry is first. Cherry is first here. That is exact. Berry is first here. Berry is first uh, second here. I mean, sorry, berry is second here. Berry is second here. Exact. Orange is third here. Orange is third there. Exact. Apple here is fourth. Apple here is fourth. Perfect. Plum is fifth. There's no plum. That's not exact. Therefore, these indexes from these two series are not 100% exactly the same. By exactly the same, I mean the same value in the same order. Therefore, when you create this table, it'll be put in alphabetical order. So the table is going to look like this. You're going to have the price table, the price column, the quantity column. And now I need to, 
and now I need to put down my, uh, that's fine. Now I need to put down my, <clears throat> my indexes, right? How am I gonna put them down? Because they're not 100% precise, they're now gonna be alphabetical. Apple, berry, cherry, orange, wait, ABC. Yeah, I, I don't know my alphabet sometimes. Plum, all right? They will be placed in alphabetical order. And then for each series, you will do accordingly, grab the values and place them in the table. Let's start with the price one first, the price of the first series. Cherry has the value two for price. For berry, it has the value one. For orange, it has the value three. For apple, it has the value four. For plum, it has the value seven. Go to quantity, cherry has the value 12. Berry has the value seven. Orange has a value 8, Apple has a value 31, and there is no plum value, that will be an AN. And that's how the table is constructed, right? That's how the table is constructed. We'll be talking about this more on uh, uh, future practice sets. We'll be talking about this more. This is a concept you need to understand. So basically, in this situation, this table is created like this. Again, it's very simple. The, if the indexes are not precisely exactly the same, then the ordering will fall into alphabetical or numerical order, depending on what type of indexes you're dealing with. Aside from that, if the indexes are precisely the same, whatever order you put those indexes in, it'll be in that order. So hypothetically, let's say we had a plum in here for series, then the ordering would have been cherry, berry, orange, apple, plum for the table, right? But because there's no plum, it's not exact, boom, done. All right, so number 14, we constructed the table, and this is pretty much the same table we're gonna use, I, I believe, in the other problems. I believe, let me just quickly scan it. It looks like, it looks like for the rest, I have to go up to number 18, and it looks like I use the same table. How very unoriginal. But nevertheless, we can go ahead and use this table and now solve the problem. All right. What is fruit DF 1 colon 3 price? Okay, excellent. Fruit DF, this table's name is Fruit DF. 1 colon 3, you remember that if I put in the first set of square brackets from the previous videos, then if I were to put the column names in, I'm grabbing the columns, right? But if I put these numbers in, 1 colon 3, then I'm grabbing the rows. And because I'm using the colon system here, right, then that means I'm, using, I'm doing it by row order, and that second number, to, like uh, that second number as is consistent in Python, will be exclusive. So I'm grabbing the, not the first row, because remember the first row is zero. I'm grabbing the second row, the third row, but not the fourth row. So I'm grabbing this row right here. I will highlight it. Excellent. So this first part right here, one colon three, is basically filtering these two rows. The second row, the third row, but not the fourth row. Okay, not the fourth row. Zero, one, two, three, and four are not selected. Done. Now, I have, I'm throwing the additional square bracket right after it to select the column I want out of those rows. I selected these two rows right here, and out of those two rows, I want the price column right here. These values, I'll highlight them green. And so, which values am I selecting from this table? I'm selecting these two values from this table by first, select, by first filtering the rows, and then the columns within those rows, I get these two numbers. I now take the sum of these numbers, which is going to give me an answer of 3. And so for number 14, that's why the answer is 3. Number 15. All righty. I'll grab the same table. Changes, get rid of the colors, and do the problem again. So number 15, we construct that same table again, and now I'm doing fruit DF, apple, colon, cherry. Not a problem again. I'm, I'm now I'm filtering it by the uh, rows by the indexes. So I'm grabbing apple, berry, and cherry. Remember, when you're doing it by alphanumerics, they are inclusive. So all three rows I grab. And then out of these three rows, I'm selecting simply the quantity column. 
right? And taking the sum of that, what is going to be the sum of this? The sum of this is going to be 38 plus 12, which is going to give me an answer of 50. So the answer becomes 50. See that? 50. Excellent. Number 16. What is number 16, guys? 16 now is going to be simply the same table again. All right. <coughs> and now I'm going to grab... Oh, okay. So now we're... We're switching things up a little bit. Now I'm using the iLock function to do the gra to do the sub slicing. All right, not a problem, not a problem. All right, so that's why I'm able to do it. By the way, check it out. I'm able to put that comma in between the first set of brackets, unlike in 14 and 15. In 14 and 15, it le doesn't let you do the comma in the first set of brackets. That's why we have to always have that second set of brackets. But the iLock gives us that. The iLock gives us that flexibility. Put the comma in there. That way, that way we can select both the row and columns within. The, just the first square brackets, okay? So here now, 1 colon 3, which rows is that going to be? Again, 1 colon 3, you're selecting the rows. This is actually more straightforward when there's a comma there because to the left of the comma, you're selecting the rows. To the right, you're selecting the columns. But 1 colon 3 is what again? It's the second row, the third row, but not the fourth row. Remember, that 3 is always is, is exclusive again. Once again, that's going to be exclusive. So I grab these two rows. And then the column, which one column I'm selecting? This is the zero column. This is the one column. Remember, I lock. It only takes the position of the columns, not the column names. That will give an error. If you put a column name in there, it'll give you an error. So here now, I'm selecting these values, 7 and 12. And this is going to give you, ladies and gentlemen, an answer of 19. All right, now we're going to do number 17. All right, 17 again, it's the same table. All right, 17. All right, we're using iLock again, but notice to the left, now, now notice that even though I'm using iLock, this is gonna be a little tricky for you guys because you see this comma in here, you're like, oh, we're selecting one and four. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm doing iLock, but I'm select I'm using the two bracket system. First bracket, second bracket. You can do that, by the way. You can do that. You can use the two bracket system. So I have the first bracket there using iLock and the second one. All right. So the first bracket, I'm selecting the rows, but notice within selecting the rows, that I'm selecting uses the comma bracket system. All right, so I'm selecting now the first, which is actually the second row right here. And now the fourth, which is actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is this one right here. These two rows I'm selecting now. Remember, if you want to select rows that are not continuous or, discont or are not contiguous, you need to use the bracket comma system. All right. Now that I have these rows selected, I need to select, the, I'm selecting the price column. So I'm highlighting just this value and this value. And I'm saying sum them up. Now notice the sum function I'm using. There's a sum function that you can apply outside like this, parentheses, parentheses. Or there's a sum function that's like a method that you can simply just say dot sum and it'll sum it. They both inherently are doing the same thing. There is a slight difference that later on after the midterm I'll talk about. All right. But, but for midterm one you don't have to worry about, but after the midterm I'll talk about it. All right. So in this case, this dot sum, what it's going to do is basically going to add up the two values. This is, in this case, two values is grabbing, it's adding, and the answer will be eight. And the answer will be eight. And now we're on to number 18. The final question for this Practice set, practice set two. Let's grab the same table. All right, let me clear it out. 
<coughs> okay, so I'm now doing LOC. I throw LOC in, the, LOC in here. Remember, LOC does the slicing strictly by the indexes and the column names. Indexes and column names. Because the indexes are alphanumerics, I must use those alphanumerics. So here I'm selecting apple, colon, cherry. So I'm grabbing apple, berry, cherry. I'm grabbing these three rows. Alphanumeric slicing, it will be inclusive. But even if it was numeric, even if it was a number index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, if you guys remember from the previous videos, LOC is, when you're slicing the rows, is going to be inclusive. LOC is one of those exception functions. LOC, they try to make it like data tables in the sense that when you're doing it, selecting the rows, the rows will be inclusive. I know that's a pain, but LOC, just think about it like this. LOC always looks at the indexes, and the indexes, when you're doing index slicing, it's always going to be uh, inclusive with the colons. So whether it's alphanumeric indexes or numeric indexes, when you're doing LOC, you're grabbing them, uh, it's going to be inclusive. So in this case, I'm grabbing these three rows, and I'm grabbing the price column, which is this column right here. And I'm taking the mean average. I don't know why I gave such a uh, weird mean average to take, but basically it's going to be 7 divided by 3, whatever the answer for 7 divided by 3 is, guys. That's going to be the mean. All right, and so these are the 18 questions. Uh, they're just 18 questions, but a lot was packed into them, so may, you might have to do this a couple times. Um, it's not a problem. It's not a long video. And we are done with practice set solution. All right. So this is the end of the video, guys. I'll see you guys in the next Q&A or video session. All right. Bye-bye.